Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, I hope you're all well and safe. Um, I'm Ronika Froes, lecturer in School of Business Administration in East Delta University, and I'm the moderator for today's webinar. So we have completed over a year now in this pandemic. And um, in East Delta University, we've been extremely resilient in our activities and have successfully conducted online classes for an ample amount of time. We are very proud to share with you that the university has not missed a single class since the pandemic started. And we in EDU firmly believe that learning and knowledge sharing shouldn't ever stop under any circumstances. And the webinar series is basically our, our very special initiative, which has been taken by the EDU management. And the idea has specially originated from our vice chairman, Mr. Saidul Numan. We are pleased to share with you that we have conducted the highest number of webinars in the country during this time. And some of them have been very informative with very highly renowned speakers. And we've received overwhelming feedbacks from our audiences too. The topic for today's webinar is the fourth industrial revolution, the future of higher education. So without any further delay, let me introduce the chief guest of today's webinar. And he is the vice chairman, vice chancellor of East Delta University, Professor Muhammad Sikandar Khan. Sir comes with a very impressive academic background where he has completed his MPhil in economics from University of Leeds, United Kingdom, and both bachelor's and master's in economics from University of Dhaka. Our vice chancellor, sir, is a veteran academician in the country. And prior to joining East Delta University, he held prestigious positions in many institutions. He was the project director of University of Science and Technology in Rangamati, Dean of Social Science in University of Chittagong, and the chairman of Department of Economics from University of Chittagong. Speaking about some of his achievements, he was elected as the president of Bangladesh Federation of University Teachers Association. He's a founding president of Economic Association in Chittagong. And he also served as vice president of Bangladesh Economic Association at different levels. So to say our VC sir is a people person, he's very passionate about working with the youth. And he feels that it is imperative to build a better today and tomorrow for young people and for the larger world. The keynote speaker with us today is Professor Ayar technology scientist, Dr. R. Badlisha Ahmad. He's currently appointed as vice chancellor at University of Malaysia, Perlis Unimap. He obtained bachelor of engineering with honors in electrical and electro uh, electronic engineering from Glasgow University in 1994. He completed his master's in optical electronic engineering at University of Strathclyde and graduated in 1995. He then pursued his PhD in the same university. His research interests are in computer and telecommunication network modeling and optical networking. He was the dean at the School of Computer and Communication Engineering and also the head of embedded computing research cluster at University Malaysia Perlis since January 2005 till February 2017. He has authored and co-authored in more than 300 conferences and journal papers. And uh, he supervised more than um, two, uh, 20 masters um, of science research students and 14 PhD students. The next we have is a special guest um, with us. She is Professor Tunku Salha Tunku Ahmad. Currently, she's the associate director and also the director of Center for International Affairs, University of Malaysia, Perlis. Prior to that, she was the Dean of School of Business Innovation and Technopreneurship, UNIMAP, till December 2019. Ma'am comes with an exceptional academic background where she's completed her master's and bachelor's in, in economics from University of Uttara Malaysia. She completed her PhD in economics from Athlon Institute of Technology, Ireland. So first, can I request um, Professor Tunku Salha Tunku Ahmad to kindly say a few words, and then we'll proceed with the next speakers. Thank you. OK, thank you, Ms. Rona Frost, the moderator for today's webinar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to everyone. 
May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be up upon us all. First of all, may I express my thanks and appreciation to the organizer, East Delta University, Ch Chattogram, Chattogram, Bangladesh, for inviting me to participate in this webinar. Honorable Professor Muhammad Sikandar Khan, the Vice Chancellor of East Delta University, Chattogram, Bangladesh, Honorable Professor in Senior Technologies, Dr. R. Badlisha Ahmad, the Vice Chancellor of University of Malaysia Police, UNIMAP, uh, Honorable Professor Mat Aminul Islam from the Faculty of Applied Hen and Human Sciences, UNIMAP, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to begin by congratulating everyone involved in this webinar and the webinar committees of East Delta University are to be commended for organizing a fine agenda. My name is Tunku Salha Tunku Ahmad and currently I am managing the International Office of UNIMAP, which is um, known as Center for International Engagement or CIE. At CIE, we focus on two main tasks. The first main task is to enhance UNIMAP's international networking and collaborations with potential and strategic partners across the globe. And our second main task is to increase the participation of UNIMAP students and staff in both inbound and outbound mobility programs through physical and virtual platforms. In doing so, we continuously explore new strategic partnerships with institutions abroad. And at the same time, we organize and participate in international programs to strengthen the strategic collaborations with our existing university partners by focusing on collective sharing of resources such as institutional expertise, research intelligence, and key data, and funding as well as grants for research projects. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share a brief info on our recent virtual activities that were conducted last year in 2020. So the pandemic did not limit us to successfully work together with a few universities, especially from Indonesia and Thailand, to consistently conduct virtual mobility programs that have benefited many students and staff of the participating universities. These international mobility programs have strengthened the communications with international networks that organize mobility programs and uh, international mobility programs allow open and constructive discussion spaces for academics, for students and also for admins, administration staff from very different educational, linguistics and cultural backgrounds. These activities will ensure UNIMAP to be relevant and attractive to its international partners across the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, participating in this webinar today, it is, is uh, participating in this webinar today is actually part of UNIMAP networking activities with a new strategic partner, which is the East Delta University, EDU. And it's a very good starting point for our future engagement and cooperation, particularly in organizing programs and activities for our students and staff as well as fostering new friendships and appreciation among the students and staff. It is hoped that by strategically synergizing the internationalization of activities, we, UNIMAP and the uh, East Delta University can improve our institutional capacity in getting more international students to pursue their education in our institution. Ladies and gentlemen, before I end my speech, may I take this opportunity to invite everyone, especially the students and the staff of East Delta University, to participate in our up that are scheduled in August this year, inshallah, in which UNIMAP will be hosting two virtual mobility programs. So the first uh, program is known as Asia Summer Program. 2021 that will be conducted from 16 to 29 of August this year. And all are welcome to join this virtual mobility program with a very minimum fee of 
USD 150 for each participant. The second program is the Asian Faculty Workshop, AFW 2021, that is scheduled from 23rd to 29th of August this year. So this workshop will be focusing on the elements of the teaching and learning, which are the de delivery, content and assessment. Trainers will be the professors and experts in the fields of curriculum and education, educational technology. So the fees for AFW is also USD 150 for each participant. So uh, for your information, we are in the process of developing the websites and it will be ready soon, inshallah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, based on the global developments, it is forecasted that we will go through a lengthy period before we can be completely free from the threat of COVID-19. It is likely that we may not have a chance to meet in person for some time for now. So I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude and also my heartfelt, my heartfelt regards and wish the best of health and prosperity to everyone wherever you are. I hope that all of us will continue this valuable networking and expand it widely by organizing more programs and engagements in the future. Stay safe. Thank you. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tunku Salah, for your kind words. And I'm sure the collaboration that EDU and Unimap are going to have is going to be very good and exciting for the students. And we really look forward to it. Thank you very much. And um, now I request our um, keynote speaker, um, Professor um, IR, um, technology scientist, Dr. Badlisha Ahmed, to kindly say a few words. But before we actually uh, go on to his session, there is a video that I would like to request our IT team to play, and then we can proceed with his speech. Thank you. Can't hear the sound. Sorry, the volume is not working. So, um, okay, if not, it's okay. Uh, we just skip to the movie. We we'll just skip to the video. I think uh, if the uh, administrator can can fix that issues, then we can show it at the end of my uh, talk. Is it okay? Still no sound. It's okay. It's okay. We can run it again after I completed my talk. Is it okay if I start my, my talk? Yes, sir. You can please start. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Ravna Afrozi from EDU. And to all, Assalamu alaikum and a very evening to all. Uh, thank you for inviting me for, for this evening uh, talk. And I really uh, feel grateful uh, of this invitation. Can uh, somebody start my slide, please? My talk, uh, the, top, the topic of my talks will be the future of higher education. Hello? Yes, sir. It's just Hello? starting. Ah, all right. Okay, okay. So my, my talk will be the future of higher education. Actually, the video will help uh, all the audience to see the changes between education 1.1 or the old one until the new uh, technological advancements in education. But anyway, I try to give my, uh, I show my, my slides and then afterwards when the technical uh, 
officer is ready to fix the pro the the issues they can run the youtube video again uh, can i ask uh, somebody to share the uh, my slide please yes sir, it's being shared oh is it being shared oh it's only i cannot see it uh, okay how how can i see it Is it possible for me to, ab to be able to see uh, this slide? Um. All right. Can I see the, the slide, please? So it's being shared. Um, can you see it now? Ah, all right. All right, now I can see it. All right. Okay, great. So. So I would like to start the uh, uh, quote by Bill Gates. Uh, he said the technology must be implemented as part of a thoughtful, holistic approach to education transformation that includes teacher training, relevant curricula, parental involvement, and programs for children that will that feel unmet needs for basic like nutrition and healthcare. Next slide. Okay, my uh, presentation consists of the following contents. Uh, one is on the, uh, the current scenario of education. And then we I talk about IR or Industrial Revolution 4.0, what it means and how to respond. And then why does digital transformation now that we have to face and does it what is it matter to education? And of course, a little bit on digital transformation. And then the trends uh, in higher education regarding digital transformation. And then we follow the IR 4.0 and its effect on education. Uh, what is education 4.0, which is supposed to be shown in the video. And then uh, we go a little bit further on education 4.0 and how we can integrate technology in uh, education 4.0 and then uh, aligning industry requirement, uh, the 21st century uh, uh, skills, uh, skills for the learners, uh, and then the major trends, and then how can education institution prepare students for education 4.0? And lastly, I think uh, I show you some samples of how uh, Malaysian Higher Education Minister uh, set up a planning on education 4.0. And then, of course, I will talk about a little bit the challenges and then conclude. You know, nowadays, uh, everyone has handphone. And not only handphone, but a smartphone. So uh, even now, we are going shopping uh, through online. And we are able to trace uh, the product that we ordered, where they have arrived, and we pay through bank, uh, bank online transaction. And this has been taken into uh, in storm. Uh, and everybody uh, willingly or not willingly, willingly, the technology is here and we have to adapt and adopt on how to use this technology. So we, we can't run away uh, on higher education as well. And it has impact higher education institutions where this technology, especially IR 4.0, uh, bring us to. Okay, next. Basically, Malaysia, we have around 20 public universities, which is uh, fully funded by the governments of Malaysia. And we have around 467 uh, private higher learning institutions. And of course, amid rapid coronavirus spread across Asia, Europe, Middle East, and also the United States school colleges, universities, 
and are now forced to enter a new education territory, which we call it a digital must be central to any institution learning strategy given its potential for enabling reach and its increasing popularity with today's students. I think uh, Ms. Raunat also mentioned that uh, EDU has never failed to conduct classes even during the pandemic COVID-19. I'm sure EDU has experienced this throughout the transformation of uh, digital changes uh, within the universities. So whether, you, we, whether we are ready or not, we have to face it and make ourselves ready. So I talked about a little bit about Industrial Revolution 4.0. For all of your information, uh, you see IR 4.0 is uh, more popular in Europe and Asia. Uh, in uh, US, I think they use the word smart industries, smart factories, all everything smart. But in Europe, European, they coined the terms as Industrial Revolution 4.0 or IR 4.0. So basically, IR 4.0 or smart factory, smart teaching, smart whatever smart, it is the same thing. So when we look at the history of Industrial Revolution 4.0, it starts by having the technology use uh, water and steam power to mechanize production factory. And then when we go for industry 2.0, where you, we use electrical power to create and produce mass production. And then for the third industrial uh, industry uh, revolution, we started to use electronics components or devices integrated with information technology just to automate production to make it more effective efficient and as well as uh, cost reduced for any manufacturer now we are at the stage of a fourth industrial revolution and the digital revolution that has been occurring since the middle of the last century and uh, this fourth industrial revolution is characterized by a fusion of technologies, a combination of lots of technologies. There is some kinds of blurring between the lines, between the physical, digital, and also biological spheres. Next. And uh, IR 4.0 is closely linked to the application of advanced technology, information control, and of course, introduction to modern day communication, which encompasses uh, nine pillars. Number one is the simulations. Now we don't use uh, the physical activities. Sometimes we can just use simulation using computers. And then we have virtual reality. We don't need to go physically to a, a place. We just use it virtually and feel like we are at that place. And also the vertical, horizontal system integration. And of course, you have heard about Internet of Things or IoT. And of course, cyber security issues is also very important, which is the main uh, items in industry 4.0, cloud computing, I don't really need to mention. We are using StreamYard. It is cloud-based. We just uh, can use our web browser to access the application. And I think most of us has Gmail. And we share, we, we store our photos in the Google Drive or Dropbox. And it's called the cloud computing. And of course, at the manufacturing side, we have additive manufacturing. And then it works on the supply chains using data that's been given by the public or the individual like us. And lastly, the robotic 
and automation at the industrial floors. In fact, from self-driving cars, uh, introduced by uh, Elon Musk, where he sells this Tesla cars, and then followed by the Chinese company also, they build electrical car, self-driving cars, up to the drone, where they deliver products through online shopping. So the fourth industrial revolution is really changing our life, the way we work, the way we communicate. Nowadays, uh, you might realize we don't use any more telephone on our desk. I don't know about Bangladesh, but here in Malaysia, the telephone is there on the desk, but it's never been used. We all using uh, this handphone or smartphone. And of course, IR 4.0 emphasizes on the development of virtual reality technology without involving much use of workforce. And then the routine, mundane jobs will be replaced. And this is growing need to develop smarter talents that can ride along the wave of digital transform transformations that we are facing now. Next. So uh, digital transformation is not basically just a half hardware or software upgrade, although that can be play uh, a part. You know, some, we we every two years we change our smartphone, right? It's about hardware and the software inside. But actually, digital transformation is a physical as well as philosophical change designed to meet the ever-growing demands of ourselves, the students, the faculty, and campus, which is meant to create a learning environment where every, everything is connected. So this is an ecosystem which combines technology, services, and security to bridge the digital, the digital gap which will create collaborative, interactive, and personalized learning experiences. Throughout, throughout my experience uh, as a vice chancellor, uh, there are emails sent regarding any issues, any problem within the universities. We also have uh, application like uh, WhatsApp, Telegram, which we created just to create a fast uh, response to all the issues facing either by the faculty members and also by the students. And by using this, we are able to respond it quickly and very fast. So that's what's happening now. So education is highly also influenced by today's digital information and technological advances. And of course, for the student, their new learning experience can be boosted with these digital transformation trends, where we have this uh, IoT, uh, big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, AR, VR, AR meant for augmented reality, VR, virtual reality, and in terms of security, which at the end increase the accessibility to all these information. Okay, next. So Industrial Revolution 4.0 and its effects on education. So you see how uh, the IR 4.0 has given a new impetus to especially education transformation. The way IR 4.0 is transforming the world using all this technology, IoT, big data, are really impacting major industries. And uh, in turn, in terms of jobs, the replacement of manual jobs by machines, uh, which make manufacturing more effective and uh, also smooth. And this implies that IR 4.0 will not only affect industries, 
but consequently will transform the way jobs and education will be seen. In Malaysia also, what we are facing that uh, most of the universities are still not ready with IR 4.0. I can say that in Malaysia, the, the level of industry revolution is between two to three or the second or the third industrial revolution. Only few really uh, implemented IR 4.0. But, but saying that, we cannot wait until it happens. In education, we have to start or we should prepare our students for IR 4.0. I'm not aware about the Bangladesh. I know your textile uh, industries is very, very, uh, very good. And I know how far IR 4.0 has been implemented at the industries. So you can see IR 4.0 wave is so strong that the chain is now is inevitable that's include including the education setting and making education 4.0 the famous buzzword among these educationists today everybody is talking about education 4.0 ir 4.0 but in japan they already so advanced because society 5.0 so IR 4.0 and education 4.0 has a major impact, of course, in our higher education uh, institution and also uh, on the education society, uh, which we like it or not, we need to do some transformation uh, to replace the orthodox methods of education, which will not be relevant anymore. Next, please. Uh, next slide. All right. So in the area era era of IR four point zero, now jobs require a very uh, the creativity uh, and likely to stay. So irrespective of discipline, education four point zero must be able to produce highly creative graduates and of course with the ability to think critically. There's no more uh, master slaves uh, work environment. I ask you to do the job, you implement the job as what I told you to do. You know, sometimes the instruction is not very clear and the expectation of the workers need to be uh, more innovative and also they have a creativity in terms of solving the problem. As mentioned by Fisk, this is a reference in 2007, explains that the new vision of learning promotes learners to learn not only skills and knowledge they are needed, but also to identify the source to learn these skills and knowledge. This means nowadays there are many kinds of source. You have YouTube, you can find the Googles, you can go find so many uh, and go to the libraries, uh, videos, audios. So need to understand how to identify the source which can be used to learn the skills and knowledge. And learning is built around them as to where and how to learn and tracking of their performance is done. Next slide. So when we look at uh, IR 4.0, there are four stages. Similarly to education 4.0, we have education 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and also 4.0. So education 4.0 is the purposely approach to learning that lines line up with the IR 4.0, and it is about transforming the future of education using advanced technologies and of course automation so with that the student should be able to adapt with skill set by the fast changing technology and they should be led but not instructed and information should be made accessible but of course not too fat to them 
So in both general and vocational education, we should aim at making students skill ready uh, to be able for them to compete with the outside labor force. So if you look at uh, evolution of education 1.0 to 4.0, earlier, you can see the student was considered as a passive recipient. Now they are considered as an active recipient. And technology is now an important part of the training. We use uh, Kahoot, even we use uh, lots of application, tel uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, and so on. And then learning was centered in school. Now learning can be anytime and anywhere. That's what we are doing now. Everybody sitting at home. No need to have a classes. You just need a PC, computer, uh, or handphone. And earlier, there was no structure about what is used and what is now. Uh, now, we have a well-designed structure of our education system. And before, it was exam-based. Everything exam, exam. Now, we have a learning-based system. And learning was a community. Now, it is has become one-to-one -one interaction. And of course, teaching has become more personalized. And interaction has become faster and smarter. Usually, we deal with classes which include 100 to maybe 200 students. Nowadays, with this technology, students will message to you day and night. Everyone, if there are 100 students in the class, you might get nearly 50% question from the students. And as it's also based on the industry's uh, revolution and education, where the industry is talking about the flexible production line, which relates to education with the tailor-made learning path. And the industry, they are working online quality center. But in education, we talk about formative assessment and the rest of like custom products, system engineering, long life learning, all can be related to education 4.0 through the divergence and pluralism, education in the goals and continuous task uh, teachers uh, learning. Next. And uh, integration of education and, and technology in education 4.0 cannot be avoided. So with education 4.0, there's an integration of technology via the digital tools in teaching as well as learning. And technology has always been at the forefront of human education as seen in the following figure. So last time you see on the figures uh, using blackboard and chalk. There's no blackboard, now whiteboard. But we still call it blackboard sometimes. And then I still remember during my study, they use the lecturers or professors using transparency slide. Sometimes the transparency has become yellow because they've used it for many years. have not been replaced the slides. And then they have uh, using a PowerPoint presentation, which is I'm using right now. And they have this computer aided instruction using uh, web based learning and teacher tools, and the rest of this the e classroom, video conference, and we're having this wireless technology 3G, 4G, 5G, and also we use the innovative technology. Next. So the entire concept of education 4.0 actually revolves around the industry's revolution. And the education system should be aligned uh, parallel to the trends in the industries. Because it is, too, it is too obvious that we are producing the graduates which they are able to work at the industries after four years of their graduation. So some of the major key points regarding the aligning 
of the industries and education society are as follows. Number one, the average student must be taught as an individual rather than a group. You, you can teach a big group, but uh, in some cases, you also need to deal individually with all the students. And then you should be able to building a flexible learning path. That means they can skip some of the chapters, allows them to find which module that they wish to learn by themselves. And also more formative tests as well. Not only uh, examination, uh, give them such uh, uh, assignments for them to do, ask them to do some presentation using technology. And of course, uh, the continuous teachers training also needed. I think as a teacher, we have to be expected that we also need to improve our skills as well, not only the students. And I think the teacher should become a mentor and as a facilitator, rather than one way uh, teaching. It's more like guiding the students what to learn, what to read, and then the more divergent and pluralism. And of course, education must be the goal. You know, what I experienced during my studies is that the fundamental of knowledge are all the same. It's only how we can deliver this fundamental knowledge to the students and by using the technology tools and so on. What happens sometimes, the lecturers are too much focusing on the knowledge rather than thinking or understanding the principle of the knowledge. So that's very important to use the technology here. And the Education 4.0 should also cultivate peer-to-peer -peer learning atmosphere. They cannot just uh, get the lecture note, go home and do their homework by themselves. They should be in involved uh, in group uh, learning and they should learn collaboratively and from each other. And uh, it should be uh, it's suggested to affect all the domains. I mean, the Bloom's model, the cognitive, affective, and also psychomotor. And of course, in the cognitive domain, application, analysis, evaluating, and creating will become way more important relative to the lower level cognitive skills. I think in EDU, I think Bangladesh already started uh, to make sure that all their engineering program are uh, relevant to the Washington Accord, right? And all the education must have uh, or implemented outcome-based education. And it must be based and follow the Bloom's taxonomy. Yeah, that's right. So these things changes, you know. Although this Bloom technology, technology is like 20, 30 years ago, but now it's become relevant. And of course, in Education 4.0, the role of teachers is that is act as a facilitator. It's not like teachers at, at the school, you know, they're facilitators. They tell them what to do and then uh, train them to um, find information by themselves and then present their findings. These are the things. No more, it's not like teachers, it's more like a facilitators. And of course, the curriculum and learning outcomes focus on complex 21st century skills. I explain to you what are the 21st century skills needed. All right, 21st century skills are actually tools that uh, can be universally applied to enhance ways of thinking, learning, working and living in the world. And uh, 21st uh, century skills are there are 12 abilities that today's students need to have and uh, to succeed in their careers during the information age. Can I ask the admin to make the slides bigger a bit? All right. 
So you can see that these are the 21st century uh, skills that's needed, like critical thinking, creativity, able to collaborate, able to communicate effectively. They should have a social skills. And of course, the information literacy, media literacy, technology literacy, flexibility, and of course, the leadership. And they should be able to initiate things in order to make their work a success. Okay, next. Next slide, please. So uh, the, this 21st century skills is, can be broken into one of three categories. The one is learning skills. Learning skills in terms of critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication. And the second uh, category is literacy skills where you need to find information, make use of the media and as well as technology. And of course, the last category is the life skills. Should have the flexibility, leadership, should be able to initiate things and have a very uh, effective productivity. And of course, not to forget the social skills. Okay, next slide. So as mentioned previously, the categories, the learning skill or the four C's. So teachers, uh, actually this learning skill teach students about the mental processes required to adapt and improve upon a modern work environment. And uh, literacy skills it focuses on how students can discern facts, publishing outlets, and the technology behind that that been used. So there is a strong focus on determining trustworthy sources and factual information to separate it from the misinformation that floods the internet. You know what happened? People just receive whatever they got from the internet. They should be able to filter all this information to make sure or to verify which information is the real and not the fake. And also the life skill category. Uh, it's really look, it take a look at the intangible elements of the student's everyday life. Because we don't want to produce a robot. The students are human beings. They have to have the life skills. So the, these intangible focus uh, on both personal and of course professional qualities. And all together, these three categories cover all these 12 21st century skills that contribute to a student future career. So we have to make sure our students are ready with all these skills. Okay, next. So 21st century learners are more involved in the teaching process rather than uh, uh, one too many, and then feed all the information to them. They are highly interactive, and they able to use online learning tools, using the social media platform to communicate. You know what happens, student? I think all of us are aware. If you ask question in your class, I think ninety nine percent you will not get any questions. But if you start trying to use uh, tools like uh, uh, Hadoop, uh, there are many applications which allows them to interact using the social media or uh, application. Then you will see their response is very, very good. They're willing to say their opinion, uh, asking questions. So these are the things that we have to understand. What happened to this young generation? Uh, and also, oh, previous slide, please. Not, not completed yet. So instructors 
must be well equipped with digital learning tools which enable them to help students in the self-paced learning and act more as a guide and facilitator than as a lecturer. Because you have to understand, different students have different capability. What we are doing now, for example, at the primary school, right? We, di we differentiate them at the early stage. Poor students all put together, sit at the one poor class, we call it. I don't know about Bangladesh. I'm talking about Malaysia. Uh, the good student, uh, very highly intelligent, they will be grouped together. So at the end, what happened in the reality is the poor student will become a leader. In fact, a prime minister or a president. In compare to these good students where the teachers, you know, focus on them. Because why? Because we forget that they, these students must be mixed together. So they are able to interact, understand each other, and equip themselves with the social skills. So this needs to be studied. What happened to this kind of method that we uh, implemented long, long time ago? The separation between good student, mediocre student, and very poor students. It shouldn't be any case right now if we can really think of using technology in our education. So go back to this uh, Education 4.0. The major trends of Education 4.0 can be divided into six items. Uh, this shift the major learning responsibilities from the instructors to the learners. And instructors should play their roles to support the transition and should never consider it as a threat to the conventional teaching profession. And the major trends of education 4.0 are as follow. We have uh, more personalized learning, more remote uh, learning opportunities, the plethora of education tools, uh, data at the fingertips, uh, easy and accurate assessment, uh, project and also project based learning uh, next slide please so we look yeah first one so what are these these things uh, first one the personalized yeah so we talk about personalized learning where education 4.0 appreciate the individual individuality of every single student in their own pace of learning so as i said earlier our traditional ways we separate between poor mediocre and very good students so with this education 4.0 we put them all together and that should allow us to teach them and allow them to learn at their own pace of learning and by having a personalized way of teaching will have a greater impact on students to achieve their outcomes easily and also, we can easily evaluate them uh, properly using the te technology which is available. And of course, with artificial intelligence, cloud computing, there are many available tools that we can use in our teaching and allow the students to learn at their own pace. So in this case, teachers are able to identify the strength and weaknesses of each student individually and should be able to guide them accordingly. Next. The second one is the uh, more remote learning opportunities. The cornerstone of Education 4.0 is making learning available anywhere, anytime, with the set of e-learning tools which promote remote and self-paced learning. I think that's what EDU uh, is data university is doing, right? You have I, I don't know uh, what a platform that you use, mainly uh, Moodle. And you put all your slides there, and the students should will access it anytime they like, and they should be able to monitor the progress of the students 
uh, following your lecture and so on. And the second is the role of classroom will change wherein theoretical knowledge will be imparted outside the classroom while practical or experiential knowledge will be imparted face to face. And of course, the, the ABL, Active Blended Learning Concept is picking up. You have cl classes, you have online learning where they access it anytime they want and this be actively involved in learning beyond classrooms. This way they end up mastering both practical and experiential learning. The okay, next. And of course, the plethora of education tools. Uh, me, myself, are really losing uh, knowledge of, because there are so many applications available. So it's just a matter of the educators to learn and adopt to this kind of technology uh, and try the tools or technique which is suitable with all, with the students and which allow these uh, these uh, tools uh, to make uh, education more collaborative and more engagement with teachers and also the students okay next so of course nowadays uh, whatever you want you just ask uh, we call it uh, uncle google uh, Uncle Google, just just type anything. Uncle Google will give you the answer. Even Google can do a lots of data analytics, and can it can produce a uh, reporting. So uh, all information are uh, at your fingertips. Okay, next. And of course, uh, you have uh, easy access using the tools to make assessment. Uh, students are able to uh, assess their their own capability uh, you can you can provide a question and answer for them to answer through that the students are able to assess their progress through this all online assessment okay next and of course project based learning is also also important and the project driven approach that education 4.0 supports helps students learn in a very fun and interesting way you can't just give individual projects you know you have to involve a groups of people give the real uh, project base uh, which uh, they need to solve it uh, of course the solution might not be a realistic at this particular moment but once you give the opportunities to involve in the current uh, issues or problems uh, facing by the community, that actually will give a start up for them to improve their solution once they graduated uh, in their studies. So this will allow them uh, to do time management, uh, do uh, managing people, organization, organizational skills, I collaborate with other students and of course uh, the man management skills which are now very much needed for the employment for the road ahead next so these trends of education 4.0 shift the major learning responsibilities from the teachers or instructors to the learners they the one the student the student will need to do most of the learning rather than we the teacher uh, feeding all the information to them and instructors should play their role to support their transition of course they might have some difficulties but we have to be supportive and we should never consider it as a threat to the conventional teaching professional you know sometimes we think that usually usually not all uh, in fact, not usually. Some teachers, they would like to keep their knowledge to themselves. You know, we're too afraid to tell everything to the students because they might fight you back. So whatever you have, whatever knowledge that you have, you only give 50% of it. So it's become a threat. But nowadays, you have to give everything. Guide them. So it's no a threat. No more a threat. For the student, we need to give all that we, what we know 
And also, if they know extra than what we know, we should give full marks to them. So that's the way. Okay, next. So how can education institution prepare students for this education 4.0? And of course, we're talking about the curriculum need to be uh, changed based on the IR 4.0 technologies, for example, the, uh, AI, robotics, and so on. It's about evolving with the times. We can't use the degree structure which we learn during our degree times. This is talking about what, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It cannot be similar. Of course, I agree, the fundamentals are the same. Fundamentals are the same. But you cannot have the uh, program which we learned like 10, 20 years ago. We still, we teach our students with the same content. It is not realistic. So hence, the university's colleges should gear up to this massive transformation, changing the curriculum, and of course, bringing technology-driven design into the curriculum with the assistance of educationists and other visionaries. Okay. Next. So education institution must also align with industry requirements with education. I think advanced uh, developed country, I think their industries are very much uh, so advanced. Uh, I think Asia, like Malaysia, I think our industries are a little bit uh, late, especially local industries. But uh, if you have a US company, uh, European company, their industry is changing uh, very fast. So in order to achieve this industry requirement, we have to remodel our curriculum. And of course, with digitization and automation and the skill-based curriculum is an order of the day. And employers are running short of skilled workforce and bank on universities and educational institutions to upskill the present workforce. And uh, I think we have to building the digital skills. Uh, and institutions should have modern workplace skills and focus on training their faculty members to build digital skills to develop fully able students for their workplace. Come on, we cannot expect our students to be digital uh, aware when our teachers, our instructors is not ready with this technology. There's no more this uh, transparency slide and so on. Okay, next. And of course, you have to opt for digital tools uh, to replace face-to-face -face and to provide virtual learning environment, uh, like using the LMS. I think there are many types of uh, uh, LMS platform that I mentioned earlier, the Moodle. I think Unimap also using Moodle. I don't know about EDU. I'm sure you also use Moodle, right? Because it's mostly used uh, LMS platform. And also technology built classroom to be initiated across universities, colleges, and higher education. That means, uh, you know, sometimes we say, oh, we want to digitize everything, advance, but uh, the infrastructure is not ready. When the internet is so slow, uh, and then cut off regularly, this is, this is need to be changed. I think Malaysia also facing the same thing. Uh, the, the internet compared to like Thailand, I think Filipina, we are still lagging behind. But I think the government is doing something to, in, in, to improve the internet facilities. So by saying technology built classroom, that means our infrastructure must be ready. The application, the, the internet facilities, and so on. Next. And of course, tweaking uh, the course delivery, and there should be a synchronization between the faculty and the curriculum they taught. And faculty should be open to using technological application to improve student cognitive learning abilities. And they should adapt to personalized adaptive learning techniques for smarter learning approach 
to make the whole process fun and interesting. Why, why I observe sometimes lecturers is so stressed, you know, very serious. Even that's, that's the reason why our culture sometimes does not support students to ask questions. You see, don't ask so many questions, you know. Just follow me. So the, the way we deliver our course, the way we interact with the students is also very important. Okay, next. So Dunwill in 2016 in, in this paper says that the advancement of technologies keeps on changing and transforming the teaching method and the setting of the learning process. And some of this has been embraced by education institutions uh, between lecturers, post-student grades and assignment are all online and students use collaborative software, students complete the assignment online, upload it in uh, online class portal. And of course, students now highly dependent on the cloud storage. And of course, communication among students, parents, lecturers, and administration is done via social media platform. No more using the, the table telephone anymore. It's changing now. Next. So the next I want to share uh, a little bit on what uh, Malaysian Education Blueprint uh, plan since 2015 until to 2025. So we have the uh, number one, the holistic entrepreneur and balanced graduates, uh, talent education, a nation of uh, life, long learning, a quality of TVET uh, graduates, and so on. There are 10 uh, shifts, actually, including the globalized online learning. OK, next. A similar transformation has already taken place in the tertiary education setting in Malaysia, where the layout of the classroom has gradually changed from neat rows and chairs to flexible seating arrangement, enabling for both individual and collaborative workspaces. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, it's, it's planned, but it's not uh, implemented fully because we still have these row and chairs in all the classroom. Only a few settings has been changed using different uh, or flexible seating arrangement. And student assignments are no longer in the form of constructed or selected responses only. And also alternative assessment has been introduced to accommodate multiple learning style. A portfolio, project papers, demonstration of skills and rating skills are among the alternative assessment bring practice nowadays in comparison to uh, examination-based assessment. And uh, Malaysia started using Malaysia Open Online Courses, which follows the massive open online courses started by uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, using the EDX form and uh, with collaboration with other universities as well. So we come up with this uh, Malaysia Open Online Courses, which available through the uh, link provided in the slide. Okay, next. So now when the school shut down at the beginning of the pandemic, we saw how the education sector immediately tried to adapt to, to remote learning. And classes were held online via video conferencing tools, assignments were submitted online, and other virtual means such as interactive learning were utilized. But what happened in Malaysia is we found out that most of the teachers, especially at the schools, are not ready. Even the schools, we found that the students from the rural area, they have a problem when the school closed. They don't have access to the internet. They don't have, they don't have the device. And then what Malaysian government do is there's no choice. They have to open up the, the schools again. But of course, we are facing with the COVID-19 uh, spread. 
So uh, we are we are still looking into what happening. Uh, if there are so many cases, I think the school need to be shut down again. Okay, next. Okay, I think we can skip this one. So the last, this is nearly the end. So these are the challenges uh, facing. You know, we can call for full-fledged online learning, leap to steep learning curve for all lecturers on digitalization, uh, digitalizing their teaching experience. But they simply not prepared. We still have need more time to educate or to give training. And also the migrating from traditional uh, or blended learning to a fully virtual and online delivery strategy, of course, will not happen overnight. Again, more training, we need more infrastructure, we need uh, fast access internet. And the teachers to acquire online driven competencies in planning, implementing, and assessing the performance of the students need to be uh, prepared as well. And of course, the last one, what I see is that the technical requirement, a lack of good internet connection and high computer specification with high processing power uh, to, uh, to, uh, to process the videos, or audios, information, and of course, lack of telecommunication hardware, a microphone, a webcam, and student which really uh, affect the uh, education 4.0 technologies. Okay, next. So uh, this is the end of my slides. I hope the video can be ready to, to properly summarize of what I've been talking about. So to conclude, number one is the rise in the revolution of industries or IR will also lead to the revolution in the field of education. Changes in industries will force changes in education. Number two, it uses more innovative and creative ideas. Because so now problems are so complex. You have not faced it before. So they have to be ready with, with innovative and creative thinking. And of course, advocates digital transformation in teaching and learning. And Education 4.0 also brought more creative ideas and digital tools which promote self-paced learning, new ways of learning. And we must adapt to the changes that are brought by the IR 4.0, uh, more so now in the light of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are forced to adapt then we realize we are not ready. We keep saying we are planning, we are planning, but we know when the COVID-19 came, then we realize most of us are not ready. And it's about time for class instructors to consider integrating more current technologies in their teaching methodology. Because the students that we have now have different preference than students that we had 10 years ago. And lastly, integrating more current technologies will make the instructors more creative in designing their lessons, thus making the learning more interesting, more effective, as the way it is delivered matches the learning needs of these 21st century learners. So with that, I end my talk. I hope all, all of you can benefit with this. I think sometimes the listening to this text is also not interesting. So that's why I try to find a video which really can summarize all these things. Not all, at least 60%. So I hope that it works now if you can show the videos. If not, uh, the admin can just give the link. You can give the link. I don't think it works, but anyway, I think the admin can give the links later on uh, to all the participants here and have a look at it. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, sir. Um, that was a really brilliant and an outstanding uh, uh, presentation. And I personally learned a lot from your um, slides. And I'm sure um, our viewers, our audiences will be highly benefited from your presentation. We've al already got some really good comments on your um, slide so far. They have found to be very informative and very helpful indeed. Um, Alhamdulillah. And it you. makes me really happy. It makes me really happy to say that um, um, even East Delta University is doing a lot of things that you just mentioned. So it makes me very happy as a faculty member to say it on behalf of EDU that we are in line with what Malaysia is doing. Yeah. So thank you very much. And um, last but not the least, may I please request our chief guest, uh, Prof uh, Professor Mohammed Sikandar Khan, to kindly say a few words and conclude the session. Thank you. Thank you, Ranak. We have actually been listening to an absorbing lecture. During the course, we have learned many things about 4.0 uh, <laughs> revolution. In fact, we have many things to learn from Malaysia and uh, we realize that Malaysia actually is a country in this part of the world which is very advanced in respect of adopting newer methods uh, in imparting education uh, in the outside world. We find Malaysia a good source of information for us in most of the uh, academic improvement areas. In fact, East Delta University has been uh, using these technologies long before COVID started. We actually were equipped with most of the techni technologies that you have mentioned before. And we have we started a longer time ago one course called Master of Public Policy and Leadership, in which we actually made provision for students to visit an advanced country and get direct information and knowledge about how things are being managed there. Not only about talking about what is happening there, but you get there and take part in their activities. So we are trying to actually introduce our students to international uh, inter international happenings, whatever has been in, uh, happening there, we are trying to take a share of it. Today, Malaysia, uh, I'm sure, is much advanced than Bangladesh, and uh, quite a good number of our universities look to Malaysia for this kind of collaboration. I congratulate you for having actually introduced the subject so deliberate, so widely and so diligently and so interestingly. Actually, whatever you said uh, throughout this probably more than one hour has been so instructive to us. And we find that in places uh, of your lecture, we could have added some examples from our own in institute in which we actually have adopted some of the things that you are introducing in your lecture today. I am really happy that we have been able to collaborate with you. And I'm sure when we say that East Delta University actually look ahead of many others in this region in respect of uh, improving the uh, imparting of education to our students. Uh, in skilled and power building capacity to adopt New adapt to new situations. We have uh, we have been using many of the techniques as I told you. And when last uh, about this time last year, Bangladesh started the lockdown. We were not locked down in 
East Delta University because we have been actually practicing those uh, techniques. We were using them and we have had a, uh, had a background already in them. And we have been able to foresee what is going to come. And we started collecting the techniques, the digital the equipments from the region market. And as a, as, a, as a result, we have been able to equip the houses of our teachers to be able to impart education from their own places. And we uh, started giving uh, the students a uh, link, uh, this uh, digital divide was, uh, they were helped in actually overcoming that. We provided help to each and every student at that time. So we claimed that we did not actually close during that time for even a single day. And it is verifiable uh, fact. And we always try to remain updated about the new situations and about the new things that have, are happening in the education field. And in respect of imparting education, uh, East Delta University actually uh, designed their classrooms long before so that uh, the classrooms we have are definitely different from the traditional classrooms that Bangladesh educational institutions have uh, long before than this. And uh, uh, as you say now, no more we are facing the students and the, the teacher and the students face you face each other, rather they should be arranged in such a manner as to, uh, as, as to uh, take advantage of the presence of anybody behind them or ahead of them or in the side of them. So the class room arrangements can be adjusted to the need of the situation. I would like to say that the learning skill the literacy skill, life skill that you have described in your course of lecture, they're all so well uh, explained and we find them really helpful in designing our future uh, teaching activities. Teachers, it is, it is not that really anymore, uh, an arduous task of delivering the thing from the book and students are only to take note of that, whatever is being told in the class. It is more interactive. And uh, during the COVID time, we arranged for uh, this more uh, closer engagement with students, cohort, uh, peer deck, all those things were being used in our uh, campus with uh, our facilities. As you observed, COVID threat actually uh, the, the worst suffering sector of the education is the primary level, the school level. The same thing actually is uh, true about Bangladesh. And I don't know because that part, of that, that area of education, that segment of education is the largest by by far the largest area. And we don't know we should, what we shall be doing with the, uh, that part of the, that segment of the education. I don't know if Bangladesh will have as a, as a country collaborated with countries like yours to learn lessons if you can find out ways of actually reaching the uh, primary level uh, students. Uh, from my part, for my part in East Delta University, I find it uh, an, an important and an opportunity to express my gratitude that your university, University uh, Malaysia Police, has been able to actually uh, contact so many other universities elsewhere. But we, for ourselves, we find ourselves very fortunate to collaborate with you. I'm sure with our collaboration, 
both Bangladesh and Malaysia will gain. I don't know how much we shall be able to contribute in respect of our experience here to whatever you are doing there so that the whole region should benefit from our collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ram. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. And uh, like uh, sir said, um, East Delta University is really looking forward to collaborate with um, um, Unimap. And I think this is just the stepping stone for this uh, amazing collaboration we're going to have, this webinar. Yeah, and um, we're really going to do uh, lots of wonderful things for the two universities. Mm -hmm. Um, so my many thanks to all the speakers. Um, it's been a wonderful session, and uh, I'm very fortunate to have moderated this session. It has been very, uh, for me, it has been very uh, informative and insightful, and I personally learned a lot from it, and I'm sure everyone's going to be highly benefited. I would like to thank um, also the uh, EDU management, our uh, vice chancellor, sir, and... Um, Vice Chairman, sir, the admin, the IT, who's all working backstage and uh, arrange, arranging these wonderful sessions. So I think um, we are up with our time and um, we should conclude now. Many thanks and take care. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. All right, thank you. <laughs>